In this little mini video, we're going to look at cross flow extraction. So in our last video, we looked at single stage extraction and we did a problem where we had a 50-50 feed uh, that we calculated had 150 kilograms per hour flow rate. And we mixed that with a solvent that was 100 kilograms per hour. And by doing that, we produced a raffinate that was 110 kilograms per hour. And our construction lines for that um, were essentially, and I'm going to try and redraw them very quickly on here. So we went from our feed to our solvent. Our resulting mixture was defined as being 40%. And then we could use tie lines to learn what was going to be in the raffinate and what was going to be in the extract. So this was our feed from step one. This was our solvent for step one. And we found this mixture. This was the raffinate, R for raffinate, and this was our extract. So what we're going to do now is we are going to extend this concept to a cross-flow extractor. So this was really stage one for our cross-flow extractor. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this raffinate and we are going to feed it to the next stage. So this is going to become the feed to stage two. So we know the point on the graph, it's right here. What we're going to do is we're going to again add another 100 kilograms per hour of fresh solvent. So if we do that, I can draw my straight line here. So this is going to be the feed to the solvent line. And I can perform calculations to determine the exact point on this graph that represents this mixture. Now in this particular case, again, if I do this using the lever rule, and my calculations for this stage will be done in the blue ink, then my uh, feed flow rate to this was 110 kilograms per hour, and my total was the 110 plus 100 kilograms per hour of solvent. And this will be equal to the length of the line from mixture 2 to the solvent divided by the length from feed 2 to the solvent. Now the length of the line feed 2 to the solvent on my little screen is 9.1 centimeters. Now again, I'm doing this on an iPad, so when you look at it on another device, you'll get a slightly different answer. I can now use this to calculate the length of line M2S. That's 4.8 centimeters. And if I measure and mark that length, I find that the mixture for stage two is approximately here. And I can follow a tie line to find the approximate location of the raffinate for stage two and the extract for stage two. If I want to determine what quantity is in R2, keep in mind that the mixture is the total flow that's going to separate into raffinate and extract. So I can apply the lever rule a second time, but this time what I know, well, I know the total flow, so I'm looking for R2. The total flow is still 210 kilograms per hour, but this is going to be equal to the length of M2 over E2, which on my screen is 2.8 centimeters, divided by the total length of the line R2E2, which on my screen is 7.9 centimeters. And so this tells me that R2 is equal to 74 kilograms per hour. All right, so this is going to now be the feed 
to stage three. Okay, so if this is F3, I'm going to mix it with solvent. So I'm going to go through this process one more time. So connecting these here, I need to figure out where M3 is. So I'm going to do that using the lever principle. So in this case, and again, I've switched to red for stage three calculations. Uh, 74 kilograms per hour over 174 total in the mixture, I'm adding 100 kilograms per hour, is going to be the length of M3S over the length of F3S, which looks like it is 9 point, well, it's really right at 10 centimeters. And so based on this, the length of M3S 4.25 centimeters, and if I measure and mark that, oh, I guess I should write it down also, 4.25 uh, centimeters, and so that gives me a location of M3 right here, which will divide out or split into two phases. I drew that line slightly high, but this will be my E3, and this will be my raffinate 3. And this is going to be the final product. So my final product will contain about, you know, 18% acetic acid. Uh, with about 2% isopropyl ester and the remaining 80% water. To get the flow rate, I'm again going to go back to the lever rule. Now remember, every time I use the lever rule, I also have the option of just simply doing a material balance. So, but again, using the lever rule, um, I have that, let's see, I've lost track of my numbers now. Okay, my total mixture is 174, and I'm looking for raffinate 3, and that's going to be based on the lengths of this line. So the total length of R3 to E3 on my screen is 8.6 centimeters. And the length of M3 to E3 uh, looks like it is about right at 3 centimeters. And so we can calculate that R3 looks like it's equal to 61, maybe 60 kilograms per hour. So I have a rough quantity of flow, and the actual composition. So in our next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at how to do counterflow liquid-liquid extraction calculations. Thank you.